All right, welcome back. It's still TV3, New Day. We're live on TV3. And I've seen that a lot of people are commenting on various issues this morning. One concerning the 10% fuel increase. Uh, a few people are saying they're paying a bit more than the 10% and they're not too happy. There are some uh, chaotic um, you know, situations in some vehicles as well. Some people are also not too happy and a bit more confused about what happened at Infancipim um, Senior High School over the weekend where some students, first year students, were turned away um, with authorities saying that they were wrongly uh, place. But we'll talk about that much later on. Now let's move on to our discussion this morning. Now residents of Dabliboare in Gambaga Municipality of the Northeast region are battling with the outbreak of a skin disease. Now the skin disease which has swept through the entire community is causing an easy calm as residents suspect a bad omen. And this is a report by Zubaida Ismail. She's joining me this morning on TV3. New day. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. How was your trip? Uh, I was fine. Good. We'll talk about <laughs> about it when we get back. But let's take a look at this particular story that she put together. Dabliboare is a farming community located in the Gambaga municipality. The community has about 300 households with at least 15 inhabitants in each household. An estimated number of about 4,500 residents live in the community. Residents say they have never experienced an outbreak of skin infection until a heavy downpour one midnight in August changed the once lively community. We gathered the morning after the rainfall, some residents experienced itchy skin. It soon spread from one person to another. Each home recorded at least one or more persons getting infected. Many residents, especially children, have sores as a result of excessive scratching of their skin. Adiza and her children are not left out in the spread of the skin disease that has swept through the entire Dabirabwari community. As you can just see what's going on here, this is what the people of this community go through on a daily basis, scratching themselves and trying to find solutions for those strange sickness. Residents say although they sought medical attention, the rashes continue to spread. She's saying that um, the rushes actually started from her and then a uh, few days later it's um, affected her children. And subsequently, every other person in this household has been affected. The community depends on boreholes and streams as their source of drinking water. Most residents attribute all kinds of reasons for the misfortune. Community folks are suspecting a bad omen. But we ask, could this be a bad omen or... Could it be a scientific reaction? Ah, very serious situation there. Zubaida joins me in the studio. Again, you're welcome to TV3 New Day. Thank so you. first of all, tell me about this trip. How did you find out about the situation there? Okay, so um, Bella, I must say that I didn't visit the Double Boy community because of the sickness. Okay. I'd actually gone there to do a story mm -hmm. about an alleged witch who was being reintegrated into okay. her community. Oh, and that's okay. where she comes from. Okay. And so as part of her training as journalist, you have to do some community entry skills. Mm. And so we had gone there a day earlier mm -hmm. to see the people, introduce ourselves to the chief, and then before we arrived with the alleged witch the next day. Mm. And once I got there, we went to the palace. Um, the chief wouldn't even listen to the reason why I have come. Their first complaint was, you know what, woman, we've actually been waiting for your arrival mm. because someone had told them I was coming around okay and I asked what the situation or what the issue is mm. and he told me that he actually called people I should look at their skins and I was like really that's really happening here mm. and so that's how we you found we out, found out. and of course once we chance on these stories you have to make um, good use of the time mm. and then the opportunity you mentioned that he asked you to take a look at the skin of the people in the community um, how bad was it I mean, seeing it in person, as compared to what we saw on TV, because it looked pretty bad, but in person, how it, terrible was it? It, it? it looks so bad. Okay. Okay, so um, the children uh, or the people that we saw are actually from just a few homes, about three 
comes okay. that were in line. Mm. And so imagine that the same disease is across every single household in that community. Mm. That is how bad it is. And um, if you're talking to somebody mm -hmm. under, under five seconds, you it's terrible to see, especially children okay. scratching from head, their head up to their mm. uh, um, soul. Yes, the soul of their feet, and, yeah. And, it's, it's, it's and they can't tell what exactly the problem is? They really don't know what the problem is. This very woman I spoke with, um, Adiza, mm -hmm. told me that she's actually been to the hospital okay. and she was given some medication, but then it's never treated the condition. And so okay. they really do not know what to do. She was given some medication. Did she say tests were conducted to verify what exactly was the problem? Uh, the, the, the health, you know, people that couldn't really tell where she was getting this uh, irritation from? No, no. Um, according to her again, when she went to, she didn't tell me which hospital she yeah. went to because um, Dublin Bari and then Gambaga is a bit distant. Okay. And definitely she didn't go to the Gambaga hospital. Okay, okay. So within the community, a chips compound, and then she got some medications. And as to whether she got the right medication or she got That's tested awesome. before even given the medications, um, it's you something can't, I can't, you can't even tell. tell. Yeah. But have they tried on their own as a community to try to control the situation? I mean, I know that with such communities, they focus more on herbal, um, you know, drugs and all of that. Did they try any of that? Um, they haven't because okay. for them, um, they think it's a bad omen. They, 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 okay. they are relating it to the fact that there was a heavy downpour in August and a day after that heavy downpour, um, they experienced itchy skin. Just and a so, day after that? Yes. Okay. And so for them, um, they think God is angry with them and hmm. he's actually, um, stricken them with that um, mm. disease. But what's the living conditions like? I know we'll, we'll have to talk about the G, um, Ghana Health Service, but before that, the living conditions, because you said they focus on, or they depend on boreholes and streams. Um, did you take a look at the, the, the water? Does it look contaminated? I mean, can you tell what exactly in the community may have contributed? Okay, so for me, I've, I've, I've seen several boreholes in parts of the northern region. Okay. And I must tell you that the the color of the water I saw from that community mm. is very different from what I've seen in other parts of Tamale. Okay. Um, though, though the ones I see in Tamale um, are cleaner than what than I what? saw in Dablebua. And talking about their stream as well, it's, it's not that good and that clean mm. for consumption. So it could be Probably uh, the could reason be that. for that. Does the Ghana Health Service know about this situation and have they tried to do anything about it? Yes. Um, once the... Um, promo was aired mm -hmm. um, Friday evening. I must tell you, um, Bella, that um, within 48 hours, mm -hmm. I have spoken with a number of doctors that I have never spoken with in my entire life. Okay. You get doctors from Kolebo Teaching Hospital, you get doctors from uh, the Ridge Hospital, and even the 37 Military mm. Hospital calling me and asking what the situation is and how they, they can help. And okay. as we speak, I must tell you that um, the surveillance department of the Ghana Health Service mm -hmm. is actually giving me their word that they are immediately going to dispatch a team to the community yeah, to oh, go right. and survey and then conduct some tests. Mm. And then it is only after the test that they can tell Ghana what the disease is and what the cause mm. could be. Well, we could not get any doctor to speak to because Ghana Health Service cautioned uh, that we'll have to conduct the test before they can sure. speak on it, which I think is the right thing to do. And so we'll wait patiently for that. But I hope that a solution can be found. I'm guessing it's affecting the education, um, you know, of the children in that community. Are they able to go to school? Did you stay long enough to know? Um, okay, so I lived, uh, we stayed in that community for seven days. I okay. mean, the, the region mm. for or that district, Gambaga, for seven days. And then we visited the community not more than three times. Mm. And I must tell you that I did, the, the only school uh, is located directly opposite the chief's palace. Mm. And I didn't see any students in that school. For the three oh. days we went there, and it's not as if we went on a weekend. We a actually, week? on the weekdays, and I didn't see a single child making an attempt to even did you sit why? into the classroom. Did you ask why? Is it of course I did because um, once you see children um, loitering around during school hours, you would be bothered as a journalist to mm -hmm. find out what um, the issue is. And one is the fact that they don't have teachers. Two is the fact that you must see the school structure that I'm talking about. Mm. You wouldn't want to sit in that mm. uh, structure in the name of um, getting education. And so these are some of the reasons why okay. But not necessarily don't because of the disease. Oh, not necessarily because, because of, that. Okay. of the disease. Because okay. for the disease, um, it appears 
they've accepted their condition and so I came in and they felt that oh there is hope somewhere and mm. so we are depending on this lady to carry our challenge out to the uh, Ghanaian populace and then but the solution you were there for a number of days mm -hmm. um, was it a contagious disease and you know do, have you tried to get tested since you came back just to ensure that you may not have contracted any skin disease of course it's a contagious disease yeah. I, I I was there with um, my colleague Daniel Oklu and he sent me a screenshot of a conversation between himself and then a few doctors and okay. they're all like the two of you have to go and get tested and mm. make sure that you don't have any infection okay. so we will be doing that this definitely week definitely will sure. do that all right well l l let's hope that I mean <laughs> I, of course there's nothing wrong. there's a part where you almost touched them so I was a bit worried for you but of course uh, these are some of the hazards that come with the job and sure. so great great work by the way and we hope that the Ghana Health Service can conduct the test and you know tell us exactly what the problem is and what the way forward is I know you've worked on a few other projects as well sure. up north and so when should we expect the next ah, story maybe let's say that um, a day in the uh, time in, a, in the life of um, an alleged witch mm. Interesting. I can't wait to uh, watch that documentary. But Zubaida Ismail, um, and yes, she was up north uh, conducting a, uh, you know, a report on a skin disease that has broken out in a region, uh, well, in a town um, in the region. Thank you so much. Thank you. And yes, Bella. it's still a new day. So much more coming up. Um,